friends welcome back to my channel my name is Wolo I live in Winnipeg Manitoba and I talk about life in Canada and immigrating to Canada so today I am NOT talking about immigration I'm actually talking about something that um, has generated so much conversations over the past one week uh, because of the death of somebody in the United States George Floyd a black man and it has generated a lot of conversations it has generated a lot of protests um, looting in the United States you know we, we in Canada we are very cool people we don't like trouble <laughs> we are cool people that's why you know I love talking about immigrating to Canada anyway so it has generated protests um, also in Canada I started in Ottawa no I think it started in Toronto first and then Montreal and then Calgary has done theirs and Regina and Ottawa. I think Ottawa they are scheduled to do theirs on the 5th of um, June. Yeah. So, you know, lots of conversations on social media about Black Lives Matter, people of color, racism, all the isms, all the isms. Okay. So, yes, it has generated that conversation and, you know, making people leaders like have the tough conversation like okay what are you guys doing to make sure that this thing ends and what i want to talk about is that racism exists in canada uh, it's, it's not that it will be typically in your face like okay you are you are this you are that get out no it's more like a systemic thing a systemic kind of racism that people experience and I will not talk about my own personal experience for personal reasons I won't talk about them but I'll talk about my husband's experience and um, it's been frustrating for him especially when he experiences these things it has to do with his uh, career path the kind of career he wants and um, when we came okay let me start from the beginning my husband's names his first name and his last name are both english names like pure british english names and if you see those names anybody that sees them will think the person is a um a european yes the person will think he's a european maybe from the uk but by the time they pick up the phone and call my husband and the next thing he's speaking in his nigerian accent of course the the you know the excitement and everything just drops you will notice it at the you notice it from the voice of the person speaking and the next they just give an excuse blah 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 and that's it the opportunity just um, goes like that because of his accent so that's one example of systemic racism where you are discriminated against because of your accent so people from india people from pakistan people from nigeria those of us who have thick accents because they do not hear what we say uh we find ourselves experiencing some form of systemic racism because of our accent so that's one racism one aspect of racism that people will get to experience especially if you are an immigrant coming from any of these areas that um, we do not have the american canadian or british accent secondly another kind of racism is the type where you apply for a job you know that you are confident that your skills um meet, matches the job description you are very confident that once you apply, you will be called for an interview and once you go for the interview, you do your best, you get the job. And once you go for the interview and the person is so excited talking to you, the moment you go for an interview and they see your face, remember they are just seeing your resume and they are excited about your resume. And the moment they see your face, the next thing, they might just, you know, one or two things will just disqualify you from getting the job. So these are the kind of systemic racism people face. And then even in the office as well, you might be so well educated. You might be so, um, you might have the skills, everything that is needed to like do the job. And you might be a top performer at your job. But you find that someone who is not even performing at his job is being promoted, whereas you are not being promoted. So that is another example of systemic racism which a lot of people have to face and you find yourself struggling and asking yourself that ah, this person who is not even as educated as i am is being promoted is given a position that he or she does not deserve whereas you who you know you're a top performer you do your job very well and you're doing everything very well you have the education but you're not given the opportunity to move up or advance or progress in your career so that's another form of systemic racism where 
you know people like us who have to fight hard we have to work as twice as hard to make sure that we are recognized at our jobs but there's one thing they call they'll say it's not just you performing at your job you have to be like um, a people's person you have to be networking you have to go all out to coach you have to you know mingle with people um, if you not have a good people skills or interpersonal skills meeting with people talking with people chatting with people coaching people mentoring people networking with people in your workplace it can stand as something that will um impede your progress whereas your fellow colleague who is busy networking coaching mentoring not even doing the job not even performing on the job the person is given a managerial position because the person is seen to have um, good interpersonal skills, good people's person skills, good mentorship skills, good coaching skills. So this is one tip I'm going to tell anybody who is planning to come to Canada. It is not just you um, doing the best at your job. You just have to go all out. If you are an introvert, I know it's going to be very difficult for you, but then you just have to like throw away that personality of yours and go all out and network and mingle with people take responsibilities coach mentor those are the kind of leadership skills you look out for not just on the job skills leadership skills that you can show and demonstrate that you can actually uh, be a leader and then you'll be given the opportunity to progress in your career so a lot of immigrants actually face this type of systemic racism because we are kind of laid back we kind of have this um well, i don't want to call it fear we do not want to show that kind of confidence that we can do it you know and then it leads to if you show the confidence that you can do it sometimes it is seen as overconfidence but if you do not show the confidence it is seen as timidity a lot of immigrants are actually timid like timid in the workplace do not go all out to socialize and all that they just want to hang in their own corner hang in their own group or hang in, hang with their own community and then when they start experiencing systemic racism they start feeling frustrated um, at what they do so um, there are other several forms of systemic racism um, racism where your your neighbor who doesn't know you might just report you for something that you just might be thinking it's a casual thing especially for families with children so if you have children and your children are making so much noise although it's a general thing it is not a racist thing it's a general thing your children are making so much noise and it is disturbing your neighbor your neighbor can report and say your children are making so much noise so do not see it as racist it's a general thing it happens to everybody or if they see your car parked somewhere where it's not supposed to be parked and your face is new in the neighborhood you're not supposed to be in that neighborhood or maybe you just you're new to the neighborhood some of them might walk up to you and ask you hey hello are you looking for someone do you are you are you lost something like that you know so do not see it as racist sometimes it's just them showing concern showing concern that you need help and you know wanting to prefer a solution or help you find a solution if you are lost just in case and sometimes it can be racist as well you know where somebody feels that you're not supposed to be in a neighborhood and you're in that neighborhood and they can just call the police and say oh we saw so 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 but then it doesn't happen in canada <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen like that in Canada. Anyway, from my own experience, so I have lived both in a rural community and I've lived in a city and I have never experienced um, any of those things like neighbor calling to report you, blah, 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 because you're making noise or play loud music in your house. Anyway, so um, I've talked too much and I don't like talking too much. So for anybody planning to come to Canada, just have this at the back of your mind. And of course, before I even give you any tip back home we face what is called tribalism if you're not from the major tribe you're facing tribalism if your father is not connected you're facing tribalism so we have all these pockets of isms what i call it easy there are so many isms tribalism fascism racism all the isms i don't know whether they are negative or they are, I, don't, I don't even know if there are positive isms but anyway every country has its own uh, challenges and you the US if that is their own challenge then that is their own challenge and for Canada Canada has its own challenges as well so we cannot just put everybody in one bu bucket to say oh this is this this is that it happens in the US in Canada we experience it but not as bad as the US so and of course we cannot complain because where we are coming from we also have our own tribalism we have our own different different isms 
that we experience in our home country and so if we come to canada we're experiencing this it's just a minor issue just you know throw it away just do not let it bother you except it's affecting your career growth it's affecting your progress if it's affecting you in any way in any form please there's a, something human right i'll put the link on the description box of this video that you can report to um but you need to have a strong enough evidence that what you experienced was a racist um, action towards you and if you experienced it then you can report but if it is something that is minor then you can't report but yeah so that's the um information i want to share today do not be afraid canada is not as bad as the us um yes because i am <laughs> i am preaching that yes canada is good we are better we are far far better to be sincere we are far far better canada is far far better than what people uh people of color experience in the us so that's the information i want to share today thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video Bye bye